Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the weekly exploration into the wacky zany world of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. We plumb the depths of his depravity and the lengths of his ludicrosity in order to figure out just what on earth is going on in that crazy brain of his. And the way we do that is by exploring his interactions with other members of the Conspiracy Truther movement. And today we're going to find out what happened when Mark Steele had a beef with Laura Nina. Now, Laura Nina is not somebody that I endorse. I do not agree with many of the things that she says. She is sovereign citizen adjacent. She offers financial advice that I find uh, a little bit questionable. Uh, but today's episode is not about her. I don't want to get into a beef with Laura Nina. I want to find out what happened when Laura Nina had the temerity to point out that some of the things that Mark Steele says are plainly ridiculous. Yesterday I put a post up about Hancock and his magic chips. And as you can see, Laura, if that's a real name, seems to think that they're not real. I got attacked by Mark Steele, which I was actually very shocked about. And he started spamming my wall, replying to everyone who also didn't believe. Calling me all the names that he can. Doing lives about me. He's actually doing lives about me. And I have now been, for the last three days, abused, harassed, attacked by Mark Steele and his brother. Then I get a whole load of messages. I mean, I, he, he's been absolutely relentless. And, and it, it begs the question now that if someone who's meant to be so intelligent that he's meant to be a weapons expert and this is the capacity of his mindset to attack me because I'm pointing out the obvious. What on earth are they arguing about, you might be wondering? Well, they are arguing about a series of text messages, leaked WhatsApp messages from Matt Hancock, the former health minister. He wrote in a series of messages to one of his colleagues that Bill Gates ought to be grateful to him for all the, the chips that he was getting implanted in people's arms. Now, that's a reference to a popular conspiracy theory. A number of conspiracy theorists, including Mark Steele, believe that uh, the COVID-19 vaccines contain chips. A and those chips were implanted any time somebody took a vaccination. That's an obviously bonkers conspiracy theory, because anybody who's looked into a, a vaccination injection can see that it doesn't contain chips. A and how on earth would a chip that was injected in into somebody be powered. It's a clearly nonsensical theory. Laura Nina does not believe that. She is calling out Mark Steele for his bonkers conspiracy theories. A conspiracy theory so crazy that even other conspiracy theorists find it completely objectionable. And what does Mark Steele do? He doesn't respond with clearly presented facts, uh, an organized portfolio of evidence to show that his ideas are, are, are true. No, he responds to Laura Nina with a barrage of insults. He harasses her in, with the hope that he is going to convince Laura to back down. That, that's what Mark Steele always does anytime somebody challenges him because he's not the sort of person who can ever survive in a technical debate. His only strategy is to beat people into submission anytime they disagree with him. And, and Laura Nina has found this out to her horror. These are real posts. Why would Laura believe that they're not? It's quite interesting. Now, I'm led to believe by Mark Steele that these are real. Yes, they are real. They are a real piss take. I should clarify that these messages are real in the sense that they were really written by Matt Hancock. They are not fake text messages. They were actually sent from Matt Hancock's phone written by Matt Hancock at a time when he was the health minister and he was the person in charge of the nation's pandemic response. But they're not real in the sense that they're not sincere. They're obviously a joke. Matt Hancock, the health minister, did not believe that vaccines contained chips. He was not actually of the belief that Bill Gates owed him one 
for implanting lots of chips. That, that's a clearly ridiculous conspiracy theory. In fact, it's obvious from the context of what Matt Hancock wrote that he was joking about the conspiracy theory. And Mark, famous for not really having much of a sense of humor, uh, certainly not being able to, to handle it when the joke was at his expense. Well, well, he thinks that what Matt Hancock wrote was some kind of confession. Everybody else in the world, including me and bizarrely, Laura Nina, can see that this is not the case. Uh, and Laura Nina had the temerity to point that out in public. Uh, and that's what Mark Steele is so angry about. So then what they did, they then spun it in the press to say it was a joke. That's what the state apparatus would do. They would love it not to be real, Laura. The state apparatus would love this post not to be, re be real, believe you me. When I'm trying to say to him, Mark, they are fake. We can't, and he's telling me, they are scientific evidence that can be used in court. Hold on a minute, are you another Giza Tiriani here? Are you going to, are you telling me you really believe that you are going to take down an MP? This is bizarre to the point of uh, discomfort that I'm agreeing with Laura Nina. She's just pointed out that Mark Steele is behaving like Geza Terriani, and, and he's another famous British conspiracy theorist. In fact, he's the guy who believed that he could uh, force Matt Hancock, the former health secretary, into some kind of confession by publicly and dangerously confronting him whilst uh, Matt Hancock was heading home from work on the London Underground. Uh, Geza Terriani was convicted for publicly harassing Matt Hancock and also a number of other British uh, people involved with the pandemic response. Geza Terriani was an unhinged anti-vaxxer who believed that, that he could bully people into agreeing with him or bully people into extracting a confession, which is exactly what Mark Steele seemed to believe. So Laura Nina is exactly right about this. Mark Steele really is behaving like unhinged anti-vaxxer Geza Terriani. If someone can't get something as simple as his WhatsApp posts correct, how can they be trusted? And if you really think this is, then I have to question how on earth are you a weapons expert? Because if you can't even decipher this or read this properly, and now I've got his brother and him both attacking me, calling me all the names, Satanic 77th. The point is with your track record, you shot a girl, you disabled her, you went to prison because of it. And yet you call yourself a weapons ex expert and you can't even see that these messages are fake. You are seriously misleading people and you no longer can be trusted. And I'm agreeing with Laura Nina again. This is bizarre. She's right. Mark Steele really is a liar. He, he lied about his backstory. He's a charlatan. He was never a weapons expert at the British Ministry of Defence. Now, aside from the fact that that isn't even a job title in the British Ministry of Defence, well, there's no time when he ever could have been in a position of technical or, or scientific responsibility. Prior to the shooting of poor Nicola Lumsden, the, the courts described him as a, a bouncer, a pub doorman. He, he guarded the door of a busy pub or nightclub. After the shooting, there's no way the British Ministry of Defence would have employed somebody with a criminal record to develop and guard our nation's most closely held secrets. That's bizarre. That's just not how it works. So Mark Steele is obviously lying. And Laura Nina is right to point out that he is a charlatan. He's a liar. And nothing he says can possibly be believed. The problem that we have, disinformation, being spread by people who pretend that are putting it. Those WhatsApp messages are real. Don't fall for false narratives, false prophecy. And he's starting to call me satanic, very using the scriptures and God and the Bible and Satan. I'm like, this man is, this man's like not right in the head, seriously. He can't even have a discussion. Laura is right. You can't have a debate a constructive discussion with someone like Mark Steele. If you disagree with him, he just insults you. He, he turns around and, and calls you a nonce, a paedophile. 
He says you're a Satanist, a member of the cult, or that you work for Brigade 77, the military intelligence organization that Mark Steele believes has been persecuting him since childhood. Mark Steele doesn't come back to you with a, a witty retort. He, he doesn't know how to organize a, a, a coherent set of data to, to make his case. He doesn't have evidence to marshal. He, he has no idea how to formulate an argument. All he can do is taunt you with playground insults. He, he can harass you until you might just see things his way. That's the way Mark Steele disagrees with you. So yeah, Laura Nina's right. Mark Steele is not somebody you can have a discussion with. And just as Mark Steele's arguments fail, the one thing he always falls back to is this bizarre kind of fake religiosity. Do you, does anyone really think that the man famous for shooting a teenage girl in the face is some kind of devout Christian, who, some, some witch finder general, who, who's going to find everybody who disagrees with the, the core tenets of Christianity, the, the religion that he holds so dear? None of that is remotely true. Anybody can see that Mark Steele is just a, a hard-drinking former bouncer ex-con conspiracy theorist who resorts to the lowest, cheapest insults any time he thinks it's going to help make somebody feel upset. It's just his way of striking back. And Laura, it must have been awful. You tried to have a discussion with him. It never works out. And people who tell you to not follow or support people like Andrew Bridgen, who, to me, doing an absolute fantastic job, as most people will agree, Laura doesn't, by the way. She thinks he has to. You've got to be careful. You've got to watch these characters. They're not there for your best interest. He's never commented on anything of mine at all. And as soon as I speak about Andrew Bridgen, he's on there. Bam, bam, bam. Why would Andrew Bridgen take Matt Hancock to court? Again, it's ridiculous. All he wants is your money. They're all running a little bit dry. They want your money. The notion that a politician might not be on the public side, that might have some kind of private interests that run contrary to the, the good of the populace. It, it, that's barely even a conspiracy theory. I think most people realize that politicians often have selfish agendas. I, I, this is bizarre because Mark Steele is criticizing Laura Nina because she thinks that politicians might be corrupt or might not have the people's best interests in their hearts, which is a, a thing that most people take for granted, which is why we have elections and, and why we have a process to hold politicians to account. And it's almost as if Mark Steele carves out a special place in his heart for Andrew Bridgen, the MP who was ejected from the Conservative Party for being too crazy. The, the party of Boris Johnson ejected Andrew Bridgen for being a wackaloo. Now, that says just how wacky Andrew Bridgen is. But Mark Steele won't have anybody say a word against Andrew Bridgen, which is bizarre because Mark Steele absolutely hates every other politician. And I think even on the face of it, even without any evidence of any deeper connection, Laura Nina is right to point out that this is bizarre because Mark Steele seems to have the hearts for Andrew Bridgen in a way that, that causes him to suspend any kind of disbelief, that, that anybody who criticizes Andrew Bridgen in public will get a tirade of abuse from Mark Steele and Graham Steele. And I did hear rumors about you killing or shooting a girl. And now I've seen more evidence. I've seen the x-rays. Seems to me the only thing you're a West, an expert as, at is um, injuring people because you can't even use a gun. You, you, you shot a girl by accident. What are you guys doing just messing about with guns like idiots? And you shot a girl by accident. Now, this is where I disagree with Laura Nina. Nicola Lumsden was not shot accidentally. Now, in, in the world of firearms law, accidental discharge of a firearm refers to a very specific kind of circumstance. It's when maybe through some kind of mechanical failure, the, the gun goes off at a time when that was not called for. Uh, 
But we know that's not the case here because we know that Mark Steele intentionally loaded that weapon. We know that he intentionally drew it from a holster that was concealed about his person. We know that he did pull the trigger. So there's absolutely no reason to suspect that this was an accidental shooting. Now, Mark Steele really did intend to shoot somebody. He was in an argument with somebody called Stephen Wilson. And he was aiming the gun at Stephen, who was Nicola's boyfriend at the time. He intended to shoot Nicola. In fact, if Mark Steele had the required skills, the required training to operate a firearm safely, well, that day he would have committed a murder or a manslaughter. It's only because of his complete incompetence that the bullet strayed from its intended path and, and embedded itself in poor Nicola Lumsden's face. Now, we don't call that an accidental shooting. That is a reckless discharge of a firearm. He was shooting like a cowboy from a cowboy film. It, it, he intended to shoot somebody. So the fact that somebody got shot was not an accident. The only thing that was accidental is that that bullet did not find its intended target. I mean, I don't know if I could, if I'd hurt someone, if I'd shot someone, if I'd injured someone, I don't know if I could really make myself a public figure. I don't know. I don't know how I could live with myself. I'd be, I think that would really fuck my head up. Realistically, he should be funding that lady, that, that waitress that he injured and made disabled for the rest of her life. He should be funding her. Laura is right, and, and it pains me to say this, because just about on every other subject you could think of, I disagree with what Laura Nina says. But on the subject of Mark Steele, well, she's figured him out. She's pointing out that he's the person who has concealed his backstory. He claims to be a, a, a weapons expert for the Ministry of Defence, who has served our country with his intellect and wit. But in actual fact, he's the person who harms teenage girls by shooting them, and then covers up his past. That's who Mark Steele is. But she's also figured out that he's the person who is so easily triggered. He, he's the person who, when confronted in a pub, with some trivial pub dispute, well, that was enough to make Mark Steele pull a loaded handgun and, and attempt to kill somebody. And it's only his incompetence that caused him to shoot the wrong person. His aim is bad. That's the only reason he's not serving a life sentence for murder. But he's, he's so easily triggered by other things. It's a trivial discussion on Facebook. Laura Nina disagreed with Mark about what Matt Hancock's text messages meant. And that's enough to provoke a multi-week campaign of harassment from Mark and his brother, Graham. They are harassing Laura Nina for no crime other than disagreeing about what Matt Hancock's messages mean. It's pathetic. He's never changed. He is literally the same man today as he was when he was 32. He, his response to any kind of disagreement is harassment. Oh, well, we have looked into the heart of darkness and, and now it's time to go home to our cups of tea and puppies and kittens and maybe there are nice things in the world that aren't the same as Mark Steele shooting teenagers. I, I sure hope so. I'm about to go for dinner with somebody and uh, it will be delightful. Perhaps you too will have a delightful rest of your day and maybe you will still want to watch Mind of Steel in one week's time when I have served up some even more bizarre moments from the life of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist.